different people have different perceptions about what the role of a data scientist actually looks like. Let me share my thoughts on this based on my 10 plus years of experience working as a data scientist in the US tech industry for companies like Meta, Cisco, and Wells Fargo. And let me share with you what the reality of data science jobs actually look like. And more importantly, if you are an aspiring data scientist, how you can use that information to better prepare yourself to become a successful data scientist in future. So let's first talk about what is the myth most people have when they think about a data science job. Everyone thinks that data science is actually acing technical interviews, building some complicated SQL and Python code pipelines, and writing some super complex code, which we see that the nerds are writing in the movies. But the reality is quite different. In the last 10 years I've spent in this industry, I have seen a lot of people who have been working in the same companies as I was. And I have seen some people who had excellent careers as a data scientist. They got multiple promotions year after year and are currently placed in some very good companies at some very excellent positions. And I've also seen people who had very slow progression if any, in their careers, they're still stuck at mid-level positions. Some are even struggling to retain their current job and to find a decent job at some other company. And the difference between these two sets of people, one highly successful and other not so successful, actually struggling, is not their technical competence or if they can write better SQL code or they know more Python than the other one. Because to be honest, in today's day and age, AI can do a pretty good job in writing SQL, Python, um, even configuring different tools and libraries. So having more or less knowledge of that is not really the differentiating factor. The differentiating factor actually is that how good someone is influencing some key business decisions. That is the differentiating factor between people who are very, very successful versus people who are struggling to get promotions. So I just want to debunk this myth that data scientists actually just write SQL, Python, they do modeling and data pipeline work. The reality is that most of data science is actually asking the right questions. It is about problem solving and it is about storytelling so that you could influence the key business decisions. A lot of people think that data scientists would be some nerdy people who are just reading books and are deep into writing some complex code and query. And then out of that, magically, they stumble upon some business insight, which totally changes the world. Well, the reality is not that. According to a recent survey, if this is a pie representing 100% of the time data scientists spend on their job, only about 23% of this is spent on coding and other technical tasks. This remaining 77% is spent in business meetings, understanding the business problems, understanding the requirements from stakeholders. It is about storytelling. It is about creating PowerPoints, which actually sell the proposition or the decision you have arrived. So the game is very different from what people actually think. And based on my experience, I think this number is even smaller. It could be 20% and sometimes even 15%. And the key thing is that as you get more promotions, as you become more senior, this piece of the pie, 23%, it starts shrinking and shrinking and shrinking and shrinking, which is a good thing because when this piece of pie is shrinking and you're spending more time on this actual communication, storytelling, decision-making stuff, that means you are actually thinking like a leader and your odds of progressing in your job and becoming a successful data scientist is actually much higher. So that is a good thing. Because remember, the difference between a junior data scientist and a senior data scientist is that the junior data scientist mainly thinks how he or she can write, for example, a SQL query. The senior data scientist actually tells that why we are writing that SQL query. What happens as a result of that, why it has significance. So having that second order thinking is needed for you to excel at the role of data scientist. And it is much, much more valuable than just having any kind of technical skills. Because again, in this day and age of AI, 
the technical skills they are dirt cheap anyone who has very basic common sense knowledge about what kind of problem they're trying to solve and what kind of data they have available they can leverage the help of ai to write even very complex python sql code to do the analysis as long as you have the clarity on why you are doing the analysis because ai is not going to tell you that because your value comes from finding the right problem and then you have to think about this value pyramid to see that how you can maximize the value you can provide as a data scientist in whatever job you're doing and the value pyramid looks like this the bottom of this is the execution pillar and that is where the writing of sql python all those codes etc this is where this comes the next layer is that of analysis here you can do some analysis on why you are seeing different kind of um, churn rate or any other impactful useful insight which comes out of this execution and the third one is strategy and communication and problem solving and this is where you should be trying to spend most of your time because the more time you spend here the more impactful your contribution would be for the company and the more you would be rewarded for that and people who spend more time here their jobs are actually in danger because ai tools can do most of this low level execution work. If you tell it that this is the data I have, this is the insight I want to get out of it, or this is the kind of result I want to get out of it, most of LLMs are advanced enough that they can write the SQL, and when you run it, you will get the insight. So writing the SQL and Python, et cetera, is not a very in-demand or high leverage skill anymore. You should try to see that how you can actually develop and hardness, your skills of strategy, problem solving, decision making, etc. Because that is what is going to get you promotions and actually that is what is going to get you hired as well. So the influence playbook, it looks very simple. Just have three steps. And you should try to mimic that even when you are creating any kind of portfolio project. And if you are on a job as a junior data scientist, this is what you should be trying to do. The first step is that you find the real, real problem. And it might sound very easy, but honestly it's not. Because a lot of second level thinking to figure out that what is the actual problem you, you, you can try to solve. Once you have identified the business problem you want to solve, and I hope you have the data for that, and with the help of AI, you can actually write some code to get some insights out of that. The next important step is telling the data story. And data storytelling is a whole skill on its own. A lot of people don't talk about it, but I think that if you are good at data storytelling, this is a very, very key skill you should try to acquire as a data scientist. And then lastly, out of all this, you should have a clear decision which you are recommending for the business. Now, there are different frameworks you will find for each of these three steps. Again, I think the most of your time should be spent on finding what is the key problem you should be trying to solve. Because if the problem is actually very important, very useful for the business, then spending more time and energy on it is actually useful. If the problem is not good and you spend five days, five weeks, five months trying to solve that, it is actually very less significant. So even if you have to spend 80% of your time finding some very, very good, very important problem, I think that is still very worth your time. And again, use different frameworks to find what the real problem is. Use the five why framework or fishbone or fishbone analysis or any other problem solving framework you can find to see that what is the actual problem what is the underlying thing which is hindering the growth of that business or any other problem business is trying to solve then the next step is data storytelling again as i said it's sort of a science in its own but at a high level most stories they do have sort of a before and then there is an after. So in most romantic movies, for example, there is the before when the girl and the boy, they like each other. And then there's an after that what happens after. And the tension of the story is this bridge in between. And in a lot of cases, when you are trying to push a decision, then that 
the scene becomes this bridge because then you can say this is the before situation based on data for example we have a very high churn rate we have this business problem we are losing a lot of money and then this is what the after is going to look like once we implement this specific recommendation which we are making so learn more about data storytelling because as i said it's, it's a very key skill and then lastly always give a very clear decision based on data i had an opportunity to work with some excellent people during my career one such person was guy rosen uh, at meta he was an excellent product manager and one thing i learned from him is that whenever we used to go into some meeting to discuss something he had this very clear ask he wanted a traffic light table pre-calculated even before the meeting begins and this is what the traffic light table looks like first thing was that we would try to see what are the factors which would help us make a decision for example at meta if we are trying to see that should we push a new feature to minimize certain kind of harms on the platform then what are the factors which can help us make a decision whether we should push that feature or not so it could be that what is the impact on harmful content it could be that what is the impact on the growth of the platform? What is the impact on user experience? So the first step is that we list out all the factors which could have any impact on that decision. And then the second step is that we would find out what are all the options available. For example, it could be that we do not launch that feature. The other option could be that we launch it right away and maybe the third option is that we launch it um, after some delay so after six months and so now once we have this table with rows and columns then the next step is that for each of these we have to assign three options it could either be red which means that it has some very negative impact on it or it could be yellow or it could be green so based on that we'll fill in all these boxes for example like here this some are yellow and then maybe some are green and once we have this pre-calculated even before the meeting begins then the main thing which we will discuss in the meeting as a group is first of all are all these factors which we have outlined enough maybe we should bring in some more factors or maybe some of these factors are not as significant as we think so maybe in that case we can eliminate those factors the second thing is that are these all good options maybe we want to add some more options or maybe we can eliminate some options and then lastly and most importantly for each of the options and for each of the factor we'll try to see that based on the data or based on the available information we have is this rating of red yellow green actually good or not so we'll discuss that thoroughly and sometimes we'll change the rating sometimes we won't but once you as a team agree on this traffic light table then it is very easy for you to make a decision anything which has more greens and yellows that is the option you should be opting for and the key factor which i want to bring out of this is that before the meeting begin whoever has created the initial draft of this traffic light system they should also come up with their recommendation for the winning option and the same thing happens after the meeting as well we would always come up with after all this analysis this is the final recommendation which we are giving and usually whenever we are presenting it after the meeting to some other high level executives and we have this level of brainstorming documented and shown as an evidence of it usually we would have no problem selling whatever recommendation we are advocating for and remember this influencing the decision making is the key key thing you would want to learn if you want to excel as a data scientist because even in most roles i think sam altman recently tweeted that in any profession as you become senior enough your job actually becomes selling and this is what we are doing here and the good thing about the role of data science is that from day one your prime job is to help influence business decisions and you have to sell whatever data backed recommendation you are able to come out of your analysis i hope you like the content of this video and if you did then also please check out this video to learn more about how you can become a successful data scientist thank you so much for watching